Hello lovely people and welcome back to this week's new video. If you're new here, hi, my name is Noah. I am a bookish and lifestyle blogger, vlogger, born and raised and still based in New York City. And as you can tell, it is the beginning of the Asian Readathon, aka Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, aka May. I'm very excited to be participating. If you are interested in knowing what my TBR for this readathon is, you'll see what I'm reading for this week, obviously, and the third week because that's when I plan on vlogging. But if you want to see my full TBR, I will have that linked up above. Right now, I am reading You Are Not Alone by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen. I started it yesterday. It was my February book of the month pick, but I'm getting to it in April because it's the Literally Dead book club um, hosted by Lala, and Elias is her guest host, so I'm, I will finish it in time for the live show for the Asian Readathon. I probably won't talk much about this one, but my definite read is going to be Saganoga by Bachan by Yoshi Shimada. I will be starting this. I will have my Japanese dictionary prepared for this one. I know this is going to take me a long time, like it looks really short, but it'll be a lot of work for me to look stuff up that I don't understand because it's written in Japanese. I'm bilingual. I went to Japanese school for like 10 years, so this will be like my month long challenge. And then I think I will start getting into We'll Always Have Summer by Jenny Han. This is the last book in the trilogy. This covers the prompt of book recommended to you by an Asian and this covers a book that's by an author that's similar to you at least. Jenny Han is Korean American and Shimada Yoshiji is Japanese. <laughs> I was reading with my mom my book and i read the prologue in the first chapter and i'm just about to start the second chapter but we did a lot of talking but this actually doesn't take place during world war ii it takes place after he was born in 1950 in 1958 when he's eight he gets sent to live with his grandma because the mom is a single mother and he like keeps trying to go out in the middle of the night to go find his mom at work because he just misses her so much and she can't have that like they basically they he said after the bomb they live in like the slum now because everything is just so messed up in Hiroshima she sends him away to his grandmother but I have two packages I ate lunch my sister wanted another a smoothie I was gonna make one for her but she took a nap but then she had to take a zoom call in the living room and I didn't want to be loud with the blender so I blended it in my room but yes I got a dress from free people let me try it on. This is the dress. It mm -hmm. kind of makes my boobs look really small. And it requires a lot of lacing. Very, very adjustable. And this is the smallest size. And even the sleeves have cute little ties on them. I love a good midi dress. It's kind of see-through, but I'm wearing like leggings underneath. It has like eyelet detailing. Yay! I ordered a bag like this. This is such a bougie buying quarantine. I got it from a consignment store. She's so cute. Oh my god. It's in really, really good condition for a consignment store. I got it from eBay from a Japanese store called Komehyo. I'll link their store and if they have like a website because they have like legitimate stores. And Japan has a really wide selection of consignment shops even and like designer bags in really good quality. This is the Louis Vuitton Pochette Accessoire. This is like a really cute armpit bag. I will post a photo of the person who inspired this look because first I had been wanting the bag but then like her photo made me want the bag even more and then also i got the dress because it looked so cute on her this is so cute this is actually my second designer bag that i bought on ebay because they just have really great bags and good conditions for like really decent prices the real world sometimes doesn't really dock the price and especially for something that is so coveted like this bag people sell it for higher than what the price actually is because everybody wants it i put my name on the wait list and everything on the louis vuitton website but it's just so difficult to come by so i'll be starting my second book and this book is natalie tan's book of luck and fortune by roselle Lim. i'm listening to it on libby natalie who became a chef and hasn't spoken to her mother in seven years since she announced to her mom that she wanted to become a chef and she returns home after her mother's death to realize that she has inherited her grandmother's restaurant the neighborhood seer said that she needs to cook three of her grandmother's recipes in order to help the neighborhood and the community there succeed but she doesn't
doesn't really want to help them because they abandoned her and her agoraphobic mother so she was like fuck all you guys turns out they might have been there for her all along and there's a little bit of a romance there so i'm gonna listen to this able to finish Natalie Tan's Book of Luck and Fortune by Roselle Lim. I read a little bit of this, Gabai Bachan, and also You Are Not Alone Before I Went to Bed, so I do have a total page count. But to go over Natalie Tan, I gave it one star. I was kind of just waiting for it to be over. I think I could have DNF'd this book, but I just wanted to finish a book for my Goodreads goal and for the readathon. So I have a book by any Asian author down. The language was so repetitive and boring and I couldn't really care about the characters. At first I tried to connect with Natalie about her grief. I felt like it gave me Astonishing Color of After by Emily X. R. Pan vibes. The synopsis mentions that there's a romance and the guy like disappears throughout the entire book and he's literally just there in the beginning and the end and the romance is not even a big part of it. So sadly I'm starting off this readathon with a one star read. I feel like in this vlog I'm going to attempt to cover all of the prompts which is kind Kind of ridiculous because this is a month-long readathon but i think my personal goal for the readathon is to read as many books by asian authors so to get to all of the books on my tbr I read this before i went to bed and i just couldn't put it down i had to stop at a good point just before part two read 121 pages it's really interesting it definitely keeps me intrigued there's a lot of mystery i'm very confused i didn't talk about this but it's about shay miller and she's kind of lost in her life she wants to find love and a good job because she's temping right now and she's very isolated her best friend is like married and has a baby and her life is completely different and then there's these sisters the more sisters who have a great circle of friends they are very successful in their job they get everything they want and it's really creepy because it says you probably know someone like shay you probably don't know anyone like the more sisters shay thinks she wants their life but what they really want is hers and it's very confusing and it's told in multiple perspectives when i think I figured it out there's something weird that's going on and I can't quite figure it out for yesterday I read a total of 448 pages I do plan on reading this today again and this when I go to bed I feel like this is my nighttime read okay so I haven't read anything but I have I read anything no, I ate lunch. I decided that I'm not going to start I Believe in a Thing Called Love today and instead I am going to get into an audiobook because Natalie Tan's Book of Luck and Fortune, that covers read any book by an Asian author, right? So she's Chinese, Filipino, Czech. And the point of this readathon is each book needs to be by a different Asian ethnicity in order to diversify your reading choices, which I think is really good. It definitely makes this more challenging than it would be. Author of Gabai Bachang, which I put in this bougie coach book cover that somebody gave me an only fits Japanese books is Japanese. So boom, boom, banged that out. So if I were to read I Believe in a Thing Called Love by Maureen Gu, who is Korean American, I wouldn't be able to read We'll Always Have Summer by Jenny Han because the other books in the prompts of Asian authors who or characters that I could relate to, the authors are Japanese or Japanese American. This would cancel that out. So instead, I'm going to keep with We'll Always Have Summer, Jenny Han for author who I can relate to. And then I just borrowed When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandia Manun because she's Indian American for an author character who is different to you. I still eventually will get to I Believe in a Thing Called Love, probably not in this vlog, but once I'm done with all the prompts because my goal again is to just read as many Asian books as I can or books by Asian authors or about Asian characters that I can, that made it really confusing. So for for today, I'm going to be reading Gabai Bacha, When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandhya Menon. At night, I will tuck myself in and read You Are Not Alone. That's up. That's literally the only update that I have. Dimple said a little prayer that she'd win a thousand dollar lottery, turned up her monitor, adjusted her ratty gray salmar kameez, and made her way to my...
Yesterday, I actually went outside and spent a long period of time outside for the first time in 42 days. I stayed outside for two hours. I mean, I've been outside for like a couple seconds to throw out trash or collect mail. I don't go out to go grocery shopping because fortunately, I am isolating with my family and my mom and my sister go out. I did spend a really lovely two hours outdoors. The weather was really, really nice. And I read a chapter of Gabai Bacham. And I decided since there are only 17 chapters, I'm going to read a chapter a day. My neck, <gasps> that's why my neck hurts today because I was looking down the whole time to take notes on all the characters I didn't know. It's definitely a really funny book. It's also really sad and I'm only obviously two chapters into it, but the author has a really positive outlook on his poor life. Surprisingly, I finished on time when Dimple met Rishi and I gave it 3.5 stars. It was cute, but I didn't start to really think that until about 50% of the way through. I would have wanted more angst, especially since it was kind of a hate to love situation, but I did really like the cultural aspect of it. count for yesterday was 397 pages while i wait for coda instead of like watching something i decided to read and i've gotten like over 100 pages done in this instead of starting a new book and i want to finish it for tonight this book is so interesting at first it was very strange and confusing but it keeps you wanting to continue reading to find out what it is that's going on <laughs> I finished You Are Not Alone before I went to bed. I am having a difficulty picking what to rate it. Uh, I think it's gonna be a 4.5, but it was so unlike any other thriller that I've read before. I just kind of want to hear what other people are thinking about it to help me sort of finalize my thoughts. That's my third book done for this vlog. Somebody on Twitter recommended a book to me. I wrote it down somewhere. It's called Home File by Camilla Shamsi, and I might just check out what it's about. It's past 5.30, but I'm still working just to like finish up some stuff and also he's um keeping me company but i just finished dark alpha's demand by donna grant which is the third book in her reaper series about fey first book is about their fairies there are reapers who are death's assassins and they are mixed with light and dark fey i'll link the seven and seven vlog that i did where i talk about that more in detail this follows like a different couple it's better to read them in order just so you get an understanding of the world because they do name drop like characters that were in previous books but this one is following Talon and Neve. This one's like a 2.5. It was okay, but I just like didn't really care about their relationship and it was less smutty than her other books were. Other books, yeah. I'm gonna continue with this series. I think I already put the fourth book on hold. That's my first read for the day. I do still have to read Goodbye Granny, my chapter for today. The amount of pages that I read yesterday. Sadly, it didn't fill the entire bar here, but I still read 203 three pages yesterday with my last couple pages of you are not alone and goodbye granny <laughs> I finished my internship, I just finished eating lunch, and I came to grab my laptop because I'm gonna bake. I did have an idea of purchasing the books that I want to read on audiobook next. The only books that I have been reading on audiobook are adult romances and YA contemporaries. So I'm a little nervous because I do have Pachinko and When We Were Orphans available. They are pretty long, they're like 16 hours. I think the longest audiobook that I've had is like 11. I definitely don't think I could listen to those too quickly just so that I could comprehend everything that's being said to me. I haven't yet decided so I'm not sure if I'm gonna listen to an audiobook while I bake some cookies which are gonna be double chocolate chip shortbread cookies. I will let you guys know but I felt like I needed to up 
update. Ooh, but I did have some packages I could open up with. Everything has been sprayed down and Lysol. The first package I'm gonna open is my book of the month package. It doesn't show you the cover, but it's Happy and You Know It by Laura Hankin. I was kind of disappointed with book of the month because I have been trying to read more POC authors this year. So every month I check and um, they had no Asian American or Asian authors for this month at all. And they only had one author of color, which I was stuck between, but I felt that the sample for Happy and You Know It was more intriguing to me. So I love all these pins. It is about a struggling musician who reluctantly agrees to a gig as a playgroup musician for wealthy infants on New York's Park Avenue. Also following perfect hostess Whitney, who's on the brink of social media stardom, stay-at-home mom Amara, who's struggling to embrace her new identity, and old money veteran mom Gwen. Filled with humor and shock twists, happy and you know it is a brilliant take on motherhood, exposing it as yet another way for society to pass judgment on women. And the first chapter was just so intriguing. I felt like it was showing you the now, and that it was gonna take you back in time to show you like what happened up until that moment, which I really like when shows and stuff do it like that. If you are interested in getting book of the month, it is a monthly subscription service that you can pick books from and they'll send it to you. This way I learn about so many new books that I otherwise would not have heard of. So if you are interested, check out the link down in the description box that is always down there for a free book. decided that it might be easier to read these adult books physically. I tried to look all over for the independent bookstores and none of them had the editions that I wanted so I decided to check out Book Depository. It's my first time buying from there and then I just ended up adding a lot of books. Last night I recorded a podcast with my friend for her new podcast. Did it over Zoom. I recorded on my voice memos. I'm working. I can't really get into the mood because it's like drab and cloudy out. I figured I would take the opportunity to talk to you about the book I finished last night. On Monday, I read 165 pages, which has been going down. Yesterday, I read like a couple pages before dinner of We'll Always Have Summer. I read it before bed. I was reading for an hour before I decided to go to sleep, and I was like a really good chunk of the way through, maybe like this much. And then I went to bed, and I was like, I... I'm not tired. When I want to finish a book or read more, I can't sleep. I decided to just sacrifice my sleep and finish this book. My total page count for yesterday is actually, it does have some bonus material, which I'll have to count, but 291 pages plus the bonus. I think I'm gonna give this five stars. It really wrapped up the way that I wanted it to, and it gave me the feels like the first book was five stars, the second one was 4.5. I just really like the way it ended. Love triangles are hard, especially when it's between two brothers, very vampire diaries. And it's hard too because both of them are really good guys, Jeremiah and Conrad. And it's weird because they're not the closest of people, but they're close, you know, and they're brothers. They've known Belly their whole lives and it's just really sad, but it was a really good, feel good book. I'm really glad I was able to finish another book. I have like a mini haul. It's from American Eagle Airy. I can only show you like three things because the other four things are intimate. Oh, I did get a set and just two basic bras, neutral, needed it. And then the other three items that I have for you, I just did the try-on portion first because I wanted to just wear them and see if they fit immediately. And I realized I forgot how fun it is to film try-on portions. The first item that I got are these black bike shorts. Not only is it like a trend, but also I have bike shorts, but they're really short, like they were for dance. So they were the super short booty short version. So I can always slip these under a dress or something like that. And they fit amazing. It fits like a second skin. Love it. The sizing was super easy with Aerie. I always know my sizing because I've been shopping from them since middle school. And I love that the cut has this cute little, I don't know what to call this. It's really unique and it's super cute. I got another pair, which is this one I saw on Lana Condor for her Airy Real campaign. Very similar cut in the front. Again, second skin, super cozy. I really love the leopard pattern. I'm super into leopard. If you didn't know, they stretch 
much a lot. And then the last thing I got are a pair of black mom jeans. I do have a pair from Topshop, but they were like $70 and they didn't fit great, but I kind of just settled in getting those because I thought I wouldn't be able to find them anywhere. And then I saw them on American Eagle. They were having a really good sale and obviously they fit amazing. They fit perfectly. I buy in the short size because I'm only five feet and a half, but I decided to get the regular size so I can cuff them at the bottom. Amazing choice on my part. It fits great. I am going to be listing my Topshop pair on Depop. It has the same wash. They've done me well for a couple years, but I found a pair that is more perfect. So I'm going to just throw everything in the wash. I'm very excited with the new items that I have. Lots of unboxings in this video. Day. I dressed up in something a little bit nicer just because I plan on taking some Instagram photos today. I uploaded my day in my life, so please watch that if you haven't already. And yesterday I did read a book. I listened to the entirety of Home Fire. Somebody actually recommended this to me on Twitter and it was miraculously readily available on Libby. It follows three siblings, older sister Yzma and her twin younger siblings, Annika and Parvez. They live in London and they're most Muslim. They have a jihadist father that they never really knew. They grew up knowing not to talk about him and that MI5 was always like kind of watching them. Isma is meanwhile she's going off to America for like a mentorship to pursue a dream that she had put off because she had to raise her twin siblings after their mother passed away. Annika is in law school and she's studying in London and Parvez left. Turns out he went to Pakistan to find out more about their father so basically he's with other jihadists. It's like a crazy really powerful book and I gave it three stars. I don't know, three stars isn't a bad rating at all. I felt like it wasn't really going in the direction that I thought it was going to and when things did happen, it kind of happened really suddenly. So I'm really glad that I read it. It's a perspective that I had never read before and it was really interesting and very thought provoking. I haven't been reading Gavai Granny like at all. I'm about to stretch for the night but I have been reading the ebook of Once Upon a Winter's Eve by Tessa Dare which which is book 1.5 in the Sindel Cove series. The first book was the only one that I gave like two stars. I think that's the worst rating I've given a Tessa Dare book, but this one is a novella and it follows Violet Winterbottom. She is at a Christmas party and she's kind of just giving up on men after the disappointment. Her parents want her to get married, so she's about to go home after the holiday party to go back to London so her parents can set her up with a man. Then somebody crashes into the ballroom. He's injured and he's only speaking Breton French. The English are at war right now, so they don't know if they should trust him. She learns that he only wants to speak with her. He'll reveal all his secrets, so she decides in order to gain his trust that she will reveal her secrets. It sucks because the first review on this is a one star. The reviews on this are pretty bad. But I'm liking it. I don't usually like ebooks at all. Like, I usually hate them, but this one I think is easier because it's really short. Hello. It's Friday now and I am here to wrap up the vlog. Last night I did finish Once Upon a Winter's Eve book 1.5 in the Spindle Cove series by Tessa Dare and I really liked it. I thought it was really sweet and cute. A good redemption story. But to wrap up everything that I read, first book that I started was this. I actually really need to like continue reading with this. I didn't read yesterday either. I'm still reading this. I might still be in my next vlog. We'll see. I can't give that a rating. I'm still reading this. And then I read Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen's You Are Not Alone for the Literally Dead Book Club and I gave this 4.5 stars. Yeah, I gave it a 4. I changed it. I was looking at the Goodreads thread that Lala has for this book club. They're like mixed reviews, so I want to see what Lala and Elias say. I read Natalie Tan's Book of Luck and Fortune by Roselle Lim. It's my very first book for the Asian Readathon, and I gave it one star. I really just did not enjoy it. My second book was When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandhya Menon. 3.5 stars. We were doing better. Dark Alpha's Demand by Donna Grant. 2.5 stars. We'll Always Have Summer by Jenny Han. What a good wrap up to the trilogy. I gave this five stars. Loved. Home Fire by Kamala Shamsi and I gave that three stars. And then my last book as I just told you was Once Upon a Winter's Eve by Tessa Dare and I gave that four stars. That actually gives me a whopping 1,955 pages read for this week which is like amazing. I'm definitely gonna say that I read 2,000 pages in my title but let's see that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven books finished and I'm still continuing this so I can't really count 
around. I did actually also finish all of the props for the Asian readathon. Basically now my goal is to read everything on my TBR. I have new books added to my TBR even now, so I'm very excited. I already completed the Asian readathon. Give it a big thumbs up if you did enjoy. Let me know how your first week of Asian readathon went, how many pages you read, what books you enjoyed the most, because I want to know and read them possibly for this month, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye! Thank you.